click start as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. There we go. Good morning, everyone. Hopefully you can see our starting screen. We have now started our live presentation. It's lovely to see that we've got quite a few people already coming in. We're just going to leave it a few minutes to see if we have any more attendees before we start. If you have a look at the top of your screen, you'll see two bubbles and one of them has got a question mark in. This is our Q&A section. At any point during the meeting, if you have any questions, please type them into there and I'll be able to see those and we'll discuss those at the end of the meeting. We'll just have a few moments while we're waiting for a few more people to join us. For those of you who are just joining us, we're waiting a few more moments for a few more people to join in and then we'll start our live event. Thank you for joining us for our preschool and nursery induction meeting. The meeting will start in a few minutes. I think we've got quite a few people coming through now, so we'll make a start. Welcome to our preschool and nursery induction meeting. This is a live event, which means that this will be being recorded. For any of you who'd like to go back and look over any of the slides or anything that's been mentioned, you will be able to do this. We will be posting this onto our YouTube channel and you'll be able to keep looking at that as many times as you need if there is anything that you need clarification on. If at any point you have any questions, we have our Q&A section, which if you look at the top of your screen where the icons are, there is a button that has two speech bubbles and a question mark in the middle. This section is where you can ask any of your questions and I'll try and answer as many of those at the end as possible. So this is our live event. We are going to be talking about everything you need to know for your child to start in nursery in our nursery and preschool. And as I say, if there's any questions or you need any clarification, please feel free to put that in the question box. OK, we've got Miss Steele with us, who's our deputy head teacher. She'll be doing our slideshow for us. So thank you very much, Miss Steele. First of all, we'll run you through our leadership team. And if at any point during this presentation, any of the slides are slightly delayed, there is just a 10 to 15 second interval in between. So hopefully they'll speed up as I'm talking to you. At the very top, we have our head teacher, Mrs Wakeling. 
She's usually based in our Bradley campus, but we do see her a lot down in Dell. There is Miss Steele, our deputy head teacher, myself, Mrs. Bradding, I'm the assistant head teacher and I'm mostly down in Dell. And we have Mrs. Weller, our assistant head teacher, who is upstairs in the Bradley campus. All of these people are available if you ever have any questions and we are always reachable through our admin email accounts. So here is our preschool team. We currently have four members of staff in the preschool. We have Miss Johns, who's the room leader, and this will be one of the ladies that you may have spoken to during your meetings for the teachers. We have Mrs Fuchs, who's our deputy room leader. We have Mrs Mahmood, who's at one of our key workers, and we have Miss Hooper, who's another key worker. All of these people you'll become very familiar with if your children are in the preschool, and some of you who have children moving over to the nursery will know these ladies from the year that you've just had. Once again, they are all there to meet with you in the mornings if you have any questions and they can be reachable via our admin email account as well if you have any questions that you'd like answered. In our nursery, we have four staff members. We have Mrs Walsh, who's the room leader in N1, which is Nursery 1 classroom. We have Mrs Bagum, who's the room lead in Nursery 2. We have Mrs Snell and Mrs Clark. And the same again, these ladies will be on the doors in the mornings or they might be at the gate. And for some of our returning pupils, you'll be very aware of who these ladies are and may have met them as you've been walking around the school. Or if you have siblings who are higher up in the school, you may also know these ladies. At Quarry Hill, we have lots of support for our families. And if there are any questions that you have about your children's development, or maybe you need support as a family, these would be the people that you would reach towards. So we have Miss Childs, who's our Senko and is in overseeing all of our children who have any additional needs. Or if you have any questions that you may have about toileting needs, support for behaviour at home, um, any strategies that you may need, Miss Childs would be the person to speak to. We have Mrs Young, who's a family support worker, and once again, she's there to support all of our families in any way that you may need. And Mrs North, who's our pupil services support officer and also oversees attendance throughout the school. If you have any questions that you need answers for in terms of any support for you as a family, it would be these three ladies that you would come to see. So we'll start going through what the school day would look like. And it is different for each class at the moment. Due to COVID-19, we've had lots of changes in regards to the setup of each day. And we are going to keep them as this for the start of September. But obviously, as the government guidance changes, this may change also. But we will update you with all of those changes as and when they happen. So for the preschool day, we open the doors at 8.50 a.m. and the doors will close at nine o'clock. This is a short window of time and it's deliberately there to make sure that we can get all of the children in nice and safely and then we can have all of our children together at the same time. This arrival is for AM children only. So please make sure that if your child is here for an AM session, that they are here at those times and they must be on time, please. During that time, our staff will help settle them with activities, putting away their coats and bags, and then they start to do independent registration right from the start. We do say to parents that, that we do not have any parents coming into the setting. This is to encourage their independency, and that may seem daunting for our two and three year olds, but once they start doing it over a few days, they become really confident, and we've seen our children really flourish into very independent children by having that morning start but coming in on their own. At nine o'clock, we have our all day children. If your child will attend our sessions from nine till three, this will be when they will come in. We like to have a stagger. It just means that we can get our morning children in first, get them settled, and then our all day children come in just after. So once again, please make sure that you are only attending the setting at these times. Between 9.10 and 11.30, we have a range of activities. We have group work options, free choosing, garden time, snack and carpet time. And in these sessions, there will be some
will sit with the children and they will encourage good table manners. They will eat with the children and it's a lovely time for them to just learn all of those table manners and talking whilst they're eating. It's a lovely time and we do enjoy seeing our children talking about what they're having for lunch. At 12.20 till 12.30 is when we invite our PM children in and the same as the morning, we have them coming in, settling to activities. Our all day children support those children by showing them what might be in the room for options to play and they're putting away their coats and bags and self-registration. Between 12.30 and 3.10, we've got all of those same activities and we do change things dependent on the children's interests. Because we have all day children, often they will start to choose activities that they think might be fun for the afternoon children. So it does regularly become changeable within the afternoon. 3 p.m. is when the collection of our all day children happens. So they go home a few minutes earlier than our p.m. children. And once again, that's just to ease congestion at the door and make sure that if those parents have any questions, there is someone who can speak to them at that time. 3.20 is the end of the PM session and this will be when the preschool will be closed and all of the children should be collected by 3.30. We'll now have a look at the nursery one. So nursery one and nursery two, it is a whole classroom that is free flowing between, but they do have different starting and finishing times. And once again, this is just to ease congestion with staff and parents, making sure that we can give that time to every parent if they have any questions. So for nursery one, children will be coming through at 8.30 till 8.40, similar to preschool where they are settling, putting their coats and bags away and doing self registration. At nine o'clock, our all day children come through and that is the same for nursery two. So preschool and nursery one and two, all day children come at the same time. 9.10 to 11.20 will be a similar choice of activities, but these activities will be more focused towards getting children ready for group work, working as teams, and beginning to build that knowledge and understanding ready for school. 11.30 to 11.40 is the end of our AM session and our AM children will be collected, followed by lunch. 12 o'clock is when the arrival of our PM children come through. They'll have settling activities, putting away coats and bags and self-registration. 12.10 till 2.50 is once again our afternoon session and similarly to preschool, nursery children will begin to ask for different activities if they've been there all day and they'll start to help put new tasks out that they think other children might enjoy using. Three o'clock is when the end of nursery one session for all children. So if they're an all day child or they're a PM child, all children will leave nursery one at 3 p.m. and they must be collected by 3.10. In nursery two, very similar, it's just a few minutes after. So nursery two children will come in at 8.40. Once again, this is just to make sure that we do not have too many parents on site at one time and that we can give that time to parents if they need to ask any questions. We do ask that questions are kept to a minimum during the morning time because we want to make sure children are accessing learning straight away. But if you do have a question that you need answering, please feel free to speak to one of the key workers on the door. Any questions that may need further assistance, I'm usually on the playground round at reception and you are more than welcome to come and see me or book an appointment. Nine o'clock is when our all day children come through once again for nursery two and they start their free choosing and adult led tasks at 9.10 till 11.30. 11.40 is the end of the session in the morning for nursery two and parents will collect and must be collected by 11.50, followed by lunch. 10 past 12 is when our PM children come through and then they begin their afternoon activities. Once again, 3 p.m. is when the all day children will be collected and then the whole session will end at 3.10 for all of our children in the nursery and they should be collected by 20 past three. All of these slides will be available and there's lots of information there. If you need to go back to those and have a look at them in further detail, please feel free to do that on our YouTube channel. We're going to have a look at our learning approach now and all about what we do in school and what we value as good education for children who are under five. So for us at Quarry Hill Academy, we believe that learning should be through play and it is at the heart of all that we do. We value the importance of opportunities for children to explore, investigate and imagine. And all of our teachers work very hard in making sure that all of these learning opportunities link with what the children enjoy and things that they may show interest in. 
We do have topics that we would use, but we do like to follow children's interests as we feel that this helps them to truly explore and be free in their learning. We value the importance of preparing for the future as well. And for our nursery children in particular, we want to make sure that they have the skills that are in readiness for starting school. So we do have lots of adult led tasks as well as free choice choosing. These tasks will be set to the children's needs and any of the interests that they have, and they will change every day. There'll be something new for the children to try with one of their key workers. We believe in good partnership with parents as well. So we value working with you and asking your opinion. So we send regular information home every week and there'll be lots of information on there about what we've been doing in school. And you might want to try this at home as well. So please do speak to us about anything that you found your child has enjoyed or any interest that they may have at home. We have wow moments that we send home and we ask parents to write down anything that your child may have done that you think is a, is a wow and that you would like to share with us. And we might be able to involve this in our planning. It could be that you've been to the zoo and your child particularly enjoyed a particular animal there. We will try and incorporate that into our planning so that we can celebrate that with you. This year we'll be having a change for our nursery parents and we'll be using something called tapestry which is an online learning journal and we are really excited about this change and we'll go on to that in the next slide talking about some of those changes and what to expect. If you have had a child in our reception, you may have already seen Tapestry or you may have seen this in other settings that your child may have attended. Tapestry is an online learning platform, which means that you will have access to photos and videos of your children's learning every single day. There'll be observations, you can upload pictures and videos from home, and there'll be regular updates and communication. We hope that with everything that's happened with COVID-19, that this will be a really good way for us to make sure that we are able to engage with you at all points within your child's learning. It has been really difficult to not be able to see everyone face to face, and usually this type of meeting would be happening at school, but at the moment it's had to be online. So we're just hoping that this style of learning will help you to be part of every step of your child's education and we hope that you will share moments from home as well. It is completely secure, you will have a password and no one else will have access to your child's journal other than the teachers and yourself. We do ask that you fill in a form to say that you are happy for photos to be used and sometimes your child might be in a group photo. If you are not happy for your child to be in group photos and for these to be shared with other children's families within that photo, please indicate that on the form that you will get in September. It is completely your choice and we hope that everybody will celebrate and use this platform to make ma the most out of their time in nursery. Currently for preschool, we will not be using tapestry for them. There will still be a paper journal, but we hope that that might change in the future. We will also have a celebration book for all of our children in nursery. And this means that this is something that you can keep for your child and this will come home. It will have lots of work that they may have done if they've done any writing or any special work that they've created maybe for you. We will store it in their journals and you could bring things in from home as well. So please do share those with your key workers. At the end of the year, you'll be able to download the journal as a PDF and you'll be able to keep this. So anything that we share on there will not go away. It will be kept for you and you'll be able to have that as a hard copy. So for preschool, we'll be keeping the traditional learning journal. And if your child has attended any other setting, you may have seen this before, or if they have siblings, you might have seen something similar. We do this in order to share all of that learning that your child has experienced throughout the year. And similarly to the online journals, there will be a selection of photos, observations, wow moments and things from home. Any work that they create will be put in their journals and it will also show their next steps in learning. We hopefully will be able to invite you in and have a look at these regularly throughout the year. And we hope that we get back to that as we would have done in previous years. If this is not the case at the beginning of the year, don't worry. We will have regular conversations with you over the phone or maybe virtually as we are now, so that you can still be part of this process and see all the wonderful things that your children are creating. So hopefully that will happen from maybe after Christmas time. So we'll have a look at the Early Years Foundation stage now. 
there have been a few changes that are coming up for September. And if you have older children who have come through early years, you might notice some of the changes that have taken place. So we'll start with the prime areas. There are three prime areas of development that we look at whilst your children are at school. The first is communication and language, where we'll look at their listening, attention and understanding, and then their speaking. We have physical development, which focuses on gross motor skills and fine motor skills, and we have personal, social and emotional development. This is where we look at self-regulation, managing oneself and building relationships. These areas have changed this year. In physical development in previous years, we were looking at health and self-care and we were looking at them as individuals being physical, moving around and being able to hold a pencil. Some of these areas have moved into other areas of development, but we are still focusing on all of those things. We still want you to encourage your children to become independent right from when they come into preschool. So even as a two and three year old, we would still be encouraging them to be independent, trying to use the toilet, washing their hands, and we will encourage them to self-regulate. So if they're becoming tearful or upset, we've got lots of strategies that we use in to encourage children to talk about how they're feeling and then helping them to then calm themselves on their own with the support of their key worker. And lots of that, will, you'll have lots of guidance on how we do that throughout the course of the year. We then have our specific areas, and these are the ones that look more like what you would expect in the national curriculum. So we have our literacy where we're focusing on comprehension, word reading and writing. We have maths where we're looking at number and numerical patterns. We have understanding of the world, which looks at past and present, people, culture and communities and the natural world and expressive arts and designs where we're looking at creating with materials, being imaginative and being expressive. All of these areas you might be more familiar with, with maths, English, science, history, geography, and then looking at art, DT and technology. This is all covered within preschool and nursery and feeds into our children into the reception. When we say comprehension, some people might be shocked that we might be doing comprehension with two year olds, but this can be as simple as them understanding a simple instruction. If we were to say to them, get shoes, would they understand that they need to go and get their shoes? This then builds into, can you get your shoes? And we start to extend what we mean by our instructions. We might then extend on to having a two step problem where we say, can you get your shoes and sit on the carpet? So we constantly are building and developing our children's understanding of spoken word, which then as they move through to nursery and reception, they're beginning to understand text. And when we talk about a sentence or we read a sentence, are they understanding what those words mean in context? Similarly, when we move on to working with reading or writing in the preschool, we're focusing on things such as looking at pictures and understanding what that picture is and being able to name it being able to match pictures and colours, being able to identify their name because they have a picture next to it. So all of these skills are filtered down right to the very start of education. And we make sure that children are having extended experiences so that they are ready for school. So we're moving on to assessment and what that looks like for your children in preschool and nursery. In the preschool, we will be looking at assessment in terms of working towards and on track, and this will be at a low level. So we'll be looking at what your children are able to do on their own and what they're able to do being supported. Similarly, in the nursery, this will be a little bit more structured and we'll be preparing children in readiness for reception. So there'll be short tasks that we give your children and we'll see how they get on. And that could be drawing a picture of your family. Thank you for those of you who did this in your induction packs. We saw lots of wonderful pictures and we are already seeing at what stage of development your children are just from those pictures. It is wonderful when we have children first starting and what may seem as a scribble or a mark make suddenly turns into a head, legs and arms. So we really value all of those pictures that you send in and we hope that you continue to share that with us because we do use that towards their assessments. So assessment is measured from working towards and on track and this has changed from previous years. In previous years, we would be looking at ages and stages and we would say to you that your child might be working at 16 to 26 months or 22 to 36. This is now changing and we are now saying working towards or on track. 
For a, a child to be where they are expected to be for their age, this would be on track and we will talk to you about this throughout the year. If your child is not on track in any area, the key worker will talk to you and give you lots of ideas and tips on what you can do at home and what we'll be doing in school in order to make sure that they are making that progress to being on track. Key workers make their judgments through their strong knowledge and understanding of their children in their groups. We also have lots of our staff have been working with young children for many years and we do ensure that all of our staff are watching and observing regularly and that these judgments are made on what they have actually seen. There are no tests. It's all done on playing and learning and we just watching our children and knowing them really, really well. And by talking to you as well, we like to hear about what your children are doing at home and we value the importance of things that they might be doing at home and how different that is at school. Your child might be very independent at home and they might be a little bit more nervous at school. It's important for you to share that, that with us so that that informs our assessments as well. So we will talk more about this as we move through the year. For the nursery, we're using our tapestry program and you may see on tapestry that we use a flag system. This is just a way for us to monitor and show you where your children are working towards or where they may be on track. And this is for every area of development in all 17 areas of the early learning goals. Although we're looking at them pre early learning goal, we're still tracking and we're still monitoring where your children are to make sure that we can ensure that they are ready for school and that any gaps that there may be are dealt with before they leave us. So you may see this on their tapestry and if you have any questions regarding flags or where your child is, please make sure you speak to your key workers. These are regularly monitored every half term and we share this information with you written and on tapestry. So we're moving on to our outdoor learning now. We are very fortunate and it is a shame that some of you haven't been able to come and see our setting. But if you have a look on our website, we do have some virtual tours where some of our older pupils have taken you round the school so that you can see everything we have on offer. So please do make sure you go and have a look at those and watch those to see what we have. In Quarry Hill, we have a very large outdoor area for every stage of your child's learning at our school. If they're in the preschool, they have their own separate environment. In the nursery, we have a three level platform of outdoor learning where we have our lower ground for physical development. We have two slides. We have our grass area with a huge sand pit. And then we have something called the Magic Garden, which is where we have our mud and adventurous play. We do ask all parents to make sure that their children are fully ready for any circumstances at school. We do have ever changing weather, so please make sure that your children have a, a waterproof jacket and you may want to bring a, the, a thin waterproof coat that's in their bag so they have it at all times. Wellington boots, please make sure we always have a pair of welly boots at school. A sun hat and sun cream for those warmer days. And once again, these are things that you can leave at school in a named bag so that if the weather does change at any time, we have everything we need to ensure that your children are able to access every part of what's on offer at Quarry Hill. We value the importance of outdoor learning. It's the best place for children to explore and develop and for them to engage in risky play. We do encourage them to climb and jump off of things with the support of their key workers. We are there at every step of the way and we are also engaging and joining in with all of this play. We do get muddy and messy, so making sure that you've got those waterproof clothes if you have waterproof trousers, this means that their trousers aren't going to get muddy and it means that they can fully immerse themselves in everything that we are offering. And we do the same as adults as well. So we do absolutely love going in the garden. Some of the topics that we'll be covering this year and these once again are ever changing. This is what we start with and then we are followed by what the children's interests are. We add that into every topic that we're doing. So in autumn one, we have the all about me and people who help us. And this is our part of the year where we're learning about the child and their families. If there is a particular job that you have at home that you would like to share with us, we do send out a letter just to ask parents to share what you might do as a job. And we hope that we might be able to have some of you in to talk about that one day and share the experiences that you have. We also talk to our children about the first job that any parent has, which is being a parent to them. 
and how important that is. So even if you are a stay at home parent, that is one of the most important jobs that we can share with our children. How do our parents help us in life and what jobs do they have to do while we're at school? It's important to share that with our children and to talk to them about caring for others. So we do ask that parents who are stay at home parents, if they would be comfortable to talk about what their experiences are as well. In autumn two, we talk about traditional tales. And these are all of those stories and rhymes that you might have been saying to your children since they were tiny babies. And we go into them in more depth and we open up with lots of activities and we talk about why they're so important and why the repetition in them helps us with further stories that we'll learn as we grow older. In spring one, we look at growing and we will be growing vegetables and plants within school. Spring two, we look at dinosaurs and this links in with our past and present topics. So we won't just focus on dinosaurs, we will focus on things that have happened in the past and things in our own lives that have happened. So when we were born, what we were like as babies and how we grow and develop as we become older and how life might be different now to when our parents were young. In summer one, we have our explorers topic. This is where we go on an exploration around the world and we look at all different areas of this world and we focus on maybe hot places, cold places, different countries, and we encourage our children to learn some different languages. Once again, if you speak a different language at home, please share this with the key workers and maybe you can teach us a few short phrases that we will share with the children. We want to ensure that all of our children, when they leave nursery or preschool, have a small understanding of at least saying hello, goodbye, please, thank you in multiple languages. We do this as part of our diverse culture. We have many families from all over the world joining us at Quarry Hill and we value all of their languages and all of their experiences. And we hope that when our children leave us, they have a little bit of that that they can share with people they meet in the future. In summer two, we have our splash topic, and this is where some of our children can get a bit wet. We use lots of water play and we do ask parents to make sure you bring spare clothes in. We will be looking at all of the animals that live in the ocean and just playing and using water and learning about capacity. So lots of things that we cover throughout the whole year. So this is a little bit about home learning and we start this right from when children start in the preschool. At lower levels, we will be sending home reading books that we have in our school library and children will be encouraged to share these with their parents at home. Nursery will also take books home and we ask that if your nursery child is bringing those books home, make sure that you are recording this and we'll be using a Go Read app which is online and it's very similar to a reading record where you just write down the book that your child's been reading. And once again, this could be books at home or books from school. And then we will track that and children will earn gems and dragon cards for the books that they are reading. With your preschool or nursery child, encourage your children to answer questions about the book. And we'll give you some of those questions when you start so that you've got an idea of what things you might ask depending on their age. And this could be simple things just like where is the bear or what colour is her dress? And it's seeing if your child is able to look at the picture and recall what's happening. We do not expect your children to be able to read words. They can make up the stories by using the pictures. And if you're regularly reading the same book over and over again every night, then they might start to pick up some of those words. And we call this their relay reading. They're starting to remember what you've said and then they're copying it in the same way that you would be reading it. And that is the first part of reading and so important for their development. We'll also be sending home a weekly newsletter and this will have lots of tasks on there that children have been accessing at our school time. And it might be things that you might want to try at home. So please make sure that you check those. They are emailed out every week. And then there's things on there that you might want to send back in, uh, little questions. It might be something you want to make with your child. And we share that in our carpet times. We also have another learning platform, which is Purple Mash, and this is used throughout the whole of our school. We use the section Mini Mash, and this is just a nice, easy platform that we use in class where children are able to access small games, painting and reading. And there's ones where they can be virtual characters where they can put their face on another character. 
and we encourage children to use and explore this to build their early ICT skills and all of these logins will be given to you in September. So this is the important part that lots of you will be waiting for is what things do you need to do to prepare your child for September? And here are some of the things that we would like you to start trying now. Supporting your child's self-help skills are really important. So things such as independent dressing and undressing for your children in preschool, if they're given clothes that are easy to pull up and down, that's the best way to start. Jogging bottoms, simple t-shirts, encourage them to put their own legs in the holes, their own arms, pulling them through with a little bit of guidance from yourself. As they move into nursery, we'd hope that they'd start doing this more independently on their own. Encourage them to use the toilet independently. We ask that all of our nursery children are fully toilet trained and are able to go to the toilet on their own. If you are not at that point yet, please make sure you're doing that through the summer holidays so that we do not have children in nappies at all when they start. This is really important for us to get them ready for school and for them to feel grown up that they're coming to their big classroom and that they're ready to start school. In the preschool, we're aware that some of our children may still be in nappies and we encourage you to start early potty training and we will encourage and support you in class with that. And that might be that you want to start using pull ups or you brave and you go straight for pants and knickers and they come straight in with lots of those ready and we will help you potty train. We have potties available, but if you would like to bring your child's own potty, that can be done as well. And this can be discussed with our room leader. Putting on their own shoes. We always say to opt for Velcro or slip on trainers that are tight around the foot. These are easier ways for them to do this on their own and encourages independence. Please make sure that all of their clothes and uniform are labelled. There are some really lovely labels nowadays that you can buy that have a logo next to them. If there is a picture next to it, children are more likely to remember that it is their piece of clothing and you might choose to just have a label with a picture at the beginning so that they know that that's their picture. Please encourage your children to start feeding themselves and that could be with finger foods in the preschool or with a knife and fork and spoon in the nursery drinking out of open top cups so that they're not spilling. All of these skills are also going to support their oral development and making sure that their teeth are ready for chewing and that if they're drinking from bottles that can affect their dental hygiene, which is a part of the early years that we are starting